Hello, um, in this video, or maybe it's going to be a series of videos to keep each a bit shorter, I want to go through some modifications I did to the built-in hair node groups, which come with Blender, um, to create this hairstyle. So I'm planning to do a full tutorial on how to create this hairstyle, um, hopefully fairly soon. And, but as you can see, we have like quite some strong parting going on here, but the hair is tied back. We have some bit of a chaotic twist happening. And in order to achieve this, I had to do some adjustments to the notes. The notes which I changed is the interpret hair curves note. This is for the parting. The clump hair curves note where I introduced some twist control. It's for here you can see how the clumps are a bit twisted. And the create guide index map which gives you the chance to um, use custom guides. Okay. Um, so how the default interpret hair curve <laughs> hair curves node works, it does the parting by mesh island. So but since I usually grow my hair from my final geometry, I don't really wanna have to cut this into pieces. Um so I want to use textures instead. Um let's go to the 3D scene. This is now a little example. So here we have the hair being interpolated. This is how it would be by default. And part by texture is using a parting texture to give each hair or each section of hair an ID where the parting should happen. When parting, uh, when painting this texture, you there's a few things to consider. Um, first of all, there needs to be a harsh line, so no filtering going on. And to do so, first we need to disable anti-aliasing, otherwise we get what color am I now? There we go. Um, I still get like some filtering going on, some in-betweens which we don't want. So if this disabled, get a harsh line and the brush fall off um, should be set to constant because if it's too smooth you still get a blend but here the hair would get confused in which what parting ID belongs to so we need the solid fall off like this also in terms of color um, I would recommend to maybe let's go here to the plane uh, go and texture paint to maybe create like your own palette so you're always gonna use the same colors um, because a little shift in the hue value will create a new parting index um, but if, for example, you stick with solid red, green, and blue, you should be fine because then you save like red, green, blue, and black, which gives you four partings, which in most cases is okay. Then also the image, I have it as non-color data. We can discard this now. As non-color data um, to give like true values. Okay, I think this is about the painting now. Let's go back to there. Um, let's start from scratch to set this up. Um, so here we have our default interpolate node. If we dive in. Um, okay, so first of all, I do not use the part by mesh island. So I just gonna rename this to part by texture. And I'm adding a new input, which will be the texture, the parting texture. So let's call it part in texture. Okie dog. We go back out. Let's quickly set our parting texture to be this. And back in. Okay, so what's going on in this node? I mostly don't know. <laughs> it's 
super complicated. But um, it seems that here the hairs are being generated, well, at least the points where the hairs are gonna grow from. And also here we have a parting ID. So these seems to be the two, uh, two things we need to keep an eye on. Okay, first bring our parting texture onto these points. So we bring our group input and we have our texture, let's grab this one, and our surface UV map. Okay, if you look at the texture, and now we have our texture sampled onto our points. Now we want to go and per hue, basically per color in the hue wheel, um, we want to give a different ID. So we separate color. And it says the hue saturation value. If you look at the hue now, um, we have a different value on each section. Easier to see if you plug a white noise in. Okay, um, so there is some errors going on, even though they're solid colors. I don't really know why it's doing this, um, but apparently from linear, the filtering from linear to closest seems to be fixing it. So again, I don't know where it's coming from, but there's a fix. And since it's in a group, you don't have to remember it all the time because you plug the texture from outside the group. Okay, um, so let's check this out again and let's have a look at the spreadsheet. We have now our points. This is just a texture underneath, so let's isolate it. Um, these are our values on our points. So we have 0 0.5, 0 0.153, 0 0.484. So here's 0 0.503, they're the same here, same here, here, here. They seem to be living on the same patch. So this is fine. However, an index is an integer. So if we now would go and say load to integer, now we have only two IDs, so we got one and zero. And this is not what we want. We want an ID for each of the sections painted. So in order to do so, we just grab this one and bring our decimals forward. And we do this by multiplying. Let's say here, set to multiply and say like two. A thousand. Okay, so now we have definitely a different value per island. We plug this again into the white noise. You can see there is different value per island. And even if we plug this into the round node, it's like this. And okay. There is an error going on. And the error is, it's not really an error as such, it's more like how the, the hue wheel works. Um, red is zero in the hue. It's either zero degrees or 360 degrees. So a red map will come as black as well if it's separate by hue. Either you don't use red, which you kind of want to use, or we change the approach here. So instead of separating by hue, we separate by RGB. But now we have a different issue because we have some reds. Let's say orange has some red, um, yellow has some red. So this is not working either. Um, we got our green, our blue. But we have separation here, which we don't have in the red. So we can just add them all on top of another. Add the red and the green. I'm going to do another add and adding the blue on top of it. If we plug this in there now, now multiply and our white noise. There we go. So now we have like a separate ID per island and we 
check our integer. Yeah, there is no chance or little to no chance that they're gonna be the same, same value. Okay, so now we have our index per painted square. Where do we use it now? As we said, here is the parting ID. So something is coming from over here. You just follow it down the noodle. It goes here, goes here, goes here, and here it is. So here right now, it's the mesh island index, which is plugged in. And this is if you do parting per mesh island, obviously. But since we replace it with texture, we just plug this in there. There we go. Okay, there is another issue now, because depending on your underlying mesh resolution, which on a mesh island there is an interpolation, but if you work with texture, there is. Um, if you look at this, uh, can you see it there? No. Let me see if I can find an example. No. Ah. Uh. I think the plug is here. Now, can't find an example. Okay, because the plane right now is just um, a single face. So if we subdivide this a few times, uh, let me go back to the outliner plane and we subdivide it, I don't know, 20 times. Okay. Um, we go back into this one, dive in there, and let's check the view. Okay, there you can see. So, because the mesh is quite low resolution, there is some interpolation going on as well. And this, when a point is growing here, it will grab this color, and we don't want that. So, we need to capture the attribute after the points are being distributed. So we capture the texture on the points and not really on the mesh. So we have to swap the order. We first create the points and then we capture the attribute. Okay, um, we can't really capture the attribute as such because we have two different modes. We got one random distribution Actually, here you can see quite nicely. <laughs> and one poison disk distribution. Um, but this one takes only one value. So what we can do instead, instead of capture attribute, we make it a named attribute. So we do a store named attribute. And we call it from float to integer. Point is fine. And that's a part ID. Plug this in this point distribution as well as into the other one. And here we plug the value in each of those. Okay, now it doesn't really matter what distribution method we use, if poison or random, because I either get it stored into a part ID and then we use the part ID over here. Named attribute, uh, part ID, part ID. Ah, it's not that, maybe because part ID. And it's an integer as well. And we plug this one in here. Okay, so we can get rid of this one here. We can get rid of the capture attribute. And now we have our points with our part ID. Let's check again. Let's check it from here. Oop. Yep, everything is working fine. Perfect. So let's get rid of this, this, and if we jump out now, we should have a partition going on. Perfect. So this is with and this is without. Okay, so if you run into 
following issue. Let's say, let me get hide this one. Um, delete the viewer. Uh, let's, let's delete this one. Here. So there is no hair now growing in the middle because there is no guide curve set to it. Um, and no ID is matching. So if you have this issue, like usually you have a guide curve on top of a certain part ID, um, that just add a guide and everything should be working fine. Here we go. So I think that covers it all. Um, maybe another thing which we can do is if we go in there and we go to a group output and we have the name attribute our parting ID um, part ID no, it was not a packet so let's let's lock it's a float uh, it's an integer and we can expose this one let's call it part ID in the Output part ID. So if we come back out, we have now our part ID also out here. Let's turn out the right noise again. There we go. Okay, I think this covers it for um, this video. Um, so if you want to keep the changes you did, you can just like save it in your where you have your asset for your asset browser and put it in there. So I have my own asset browser which is called Hair Notes. Um, so this way you don't override the original one, um, but you can always bring in your own one from the asset browser or even like in the Shift A menu. If you go to Geometry Notes, Shift A, you got Hair Notes here and you got this. I got it twice right now due to this tutorial. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, doesn't matter. So, see you in the next video when we go over clump hair curves. And we're going to do another video about the create guide index map. All right. Then, see you later. Bye bye.